On his first day as a college student, Tom Whalen literally walked down the street from his home to attend the San Diego College for Men. He was quite familiar with the route. Whalen had long served as an altar boy for Charles Francis Buddy, Bishop of the San Diego Diocese and founder of the college. Bishop Buddy was a very, to me personally, he was a very friendly guy. He was almost like my grandfather or somebody. I can remember when I was serving Mass for him in his chapel of the Holy Spirit. It was very, very pleasant, very outgoing to me personally. I had, I think he's a great man, a great bishop. A USD has always been part of our family. Both of my parents graduated from here. They met here. They were married here. And I was baptized here by Bishop Buddy. Bishop Buddy, in fact, not only performed the ceremony, but also picked the date Tom and Catherine would be wed. Bishop Buddy was arranging his summer schedule as it was a busy schedule, and he invited me up to his office uh, to arrange when Tom and I were going to get married. I had said, well, we were going to wait a year, and he said, no, that we had been engaged long enough you will be married on June the 22nd. He arranged uh, not only the time and the ceremony, but he paid for our reception. We're of all humble beginnings, so to have a bishop perform our wedding was a truly a gift from the heart. After earning his degree in business, Waylon attended the USD School of Law at night. He launched his legal career in the San Diego District Attorney's Office. The experience would prove invaluable. I got real good experience in the district attorney's office. I, I was very fortunate when I went there. One thing you really don't learn in law school is how to try a case. And when I went there, I, uh, one of the first things I did is I went down to watch what I thought were some of the better lawyers try cases. And that's kind of how I learned how to do, how to be a good trial attorney. Tom as an attorney and, and Tom as a judge have one thing in common and the phrase was often, no problem, uh, whatever it is. Tom saw no problem to it, and that wasn't because he wasn't serious, but because he digested all the material, he dealt with it, was never rattled, and proceeded to do an excellent job, but whatever you said to him was the problem, was no problem. In 1990, Governor George Duke Majin tapped Whalen for a seat on the Superior Court. Soon thereafter, a gruesome murder case landed in his courtroom. Betty Broderick had shot her ex-husband and his new wife. The tabloids were ablaze. Whalen hardly flinched. He was a perfect judge to handle the Betty Broderick case. He had, the that, again, that calm temperament. He was an absolute expert in the area. He tried difficult cases as a lawyer, knew what would be coming up, and dealt with everybody even-handedly. But the one thing that was clear in that case, he was in control of that trial. Behind the sensational headlines loomed a significant legal question. Video cameras had never before been allowed to record a trial. The decision of whether to permit them fell to Tom Whalen. When I started the Broderick, as I was assigned the Broderick trial, that was the year that Court TV was just starting. And so Court TV came to me and wanted to do a live gavel-to-gavel -gavel telecast to the Broderick case. Obviously a lot of public interest in that case. I, I had people lined up outside my courtroom, started at seven o'clock in the morning. It, it, the public's got a right to know. And the fact the courtroom isn't big enough for everybody that wants to be in there to be in there is not the public's fault. I was more concerned that the camera didn't intimidate any witnesses or that it didn't cause the attorneys to um, showboat, shall we say. In 1998, Whalen left the Superior Court for the federal bench. While the schedule of a federal district court judge is full, Whalen can still make time to pursue his love and pride of his Irish heritage. Yeah, the traditional music festival in Ennis every November, it's the second weekend in November, where they get the, all the Cayley bands from around the country to come there and play. I've been there at times when they have so many groups, the groups are looking for a place to play. They'll play in the grocery stores, the bakeries, and not just in the pubs or what have you. We were in a trip one time to um, Kong, and they had some people came up to him and it was actually an Irish reporter publication and wanted to take some photographs while of, of people kind of enjoying them, themselves in an Irish pub and wanted to find a typical Irishman. So they approached my dad and said, can we photograph you? You look just like you fit here. And he, of course, oh yeah, you can take my picture and loved it. And uh, they came back and said, you're from America? You look like you're from Ireland. 